speaking after such uh, an outstanding environmental organisation of our friends of the Air Scotland, although I did hope she was going to hand over to some community <laughs> groups, but I think the main thing today is to, to pay tribute to the great local campaigns that have been across Scotland. Obviously, uh, I came into this principally because of the Leith campaign, and I certainly think uh, uh, the Leith campaigners uh, should be uh, congratulated on their, certainly their success until now in terms of getting Forth Energy to drop the proposal. Of course, they're not complacent any more than I am. It can always come back, and Sally there in particular should be mentioned as having led the campaign, but clearly there's other people here who've been uh, part uh, of that. I think the important thing is, and that's why I was so pleased that Friends of the Earth were, leading, were heading this up uh, before me, is that we must emphasize the environmental arguments against biomass, because some uh, politicians and others are trying to, and of course energy is part of this, are trying to present it as somehow an environmentally uh, friendly form of energy generation. So I think the key thing uh, in the Leith campaign and certainly other campaigns too is actually to demolish those arguments. And of course it can be done in many uh, different ways. We've heard about the effects internationally in terms of the countries where wood would have to be uh, grown in enormous quantities and imported into this country. Never mind the the emissions in transporting and the actual effect uh, on the countries uh, as well. We have the local environmental uh, problems that we know so well about that were highlighted in the Leith campaign, but also, of course, the negative consequences for climate change. And perhaps that's the most important argument to get over to politicians, because, of course, we're rightly proud of the targets we've set uh, in this uh, parliament. But uh, certainly, in the, uh, over uh, the coming decades, uh, biomass is not going to help uh, those targets. And I think that's a message we have to spell out loudly and clearly to the politicians in the building behind me. It's great to see a selection of politicians from various uh, political parties. I can certainly see the, some SNP, Labour and Green politicians here. There may be uh, others, I hope, as well. Uh, but clearly it's still a minority who really understand these arguments. There's going to be a debate and vote about subsidies for biomass coming up before the summer recess, so quite right that you've honed in on that uh, issue uh, for the lobby today. It's great the Scottish Government has said no subsidies for electricity, only biomass, but clearly there are uh, loopholes in what's proposed because it may well be that combined heat power biomass with very low levels of efficiency uh, will be uh, granted subsidies uh, according to what is proposed at present. So, it's great to see some SNP people here. I hope they will lobby the government as well as all the rest of us to make sure that those loopholes are closed and that no large-scale biomass uh, receives uh, any subsidy from uh, the Scottish government. So there's a lot of work to do on the subsidies. There's a lot of work to do, I know, in all the ongoing local campaigns. And we'll certainly continue to be very, very watchful and lead to make sure that no similar uh, application comes forward uh, in the coming period. So. Uh, congratulations to everyone who's organised the lobby today, and most of all, congratulations for the great campaigns you've been running over the last few months. Um, I'm now going to hand over the mic to Alison Johnston, Greens, MSP for Lothian. Um, thank you very much. I too would like to congratulate Biofuel Watch, No Leaf Biomass, <coughs> Friends of the Earth and Grangemouth Community Council and all of you who have come along today to highlight the fact that this is a very important issue. What on earth are we thinking about paying people to produce wood in foreign countries to ship over here to burn, you know, to provide electricity? It is absolutely it's just daft. It doesn't make any sense. And what we're doing is we're removing the focus from the things we should be investing in and thinking about. If we were half as concerned about having genuinely energy efficient homes, we wouldn't be looking at this. We're becoming increasingly desperate in our hunt for energy, looking at fracking, looking at deforestation and the human rights abuses that come along with that. I'm absolutely delighted to be standing here today. Um, the footage will reach people who are in these areas that are under serious threat and it will show them that we do care, we are concerned about these issues. Malcolm is absolutely right, we cannot allow any loopholes in this subsidy. There is a place for small scale renewable biomass, we can burn little wood to heat homes but using massive forests to provide electricity just doesn't make any sense. We need to shift the focus to small scale, truly renewable energy in our communities. And we need to involve the public and the third sector 
and make it something that benefits us all, not just big business for the few. Um, I think I'll, I'll wrap up there, but thank you very much, and we will continue to oppose this crazy idea. Thank you. Thanks so much, and unless there's any volunteers from the Community Council who want to come forward and say a few words, um, I'll just wrap up and say thanks again for coming, and I'd like to just let you know about a couple of things that you can do. Oh, wait. Hang on. We do have... We've got Mark... Um, Mark from the Grange Math Community Council, who's going to say a couple of words. It will be a couple of words, I'll wrap up very quickly. Uh, it's great to see so many people here today and such uh, positive support from our MSPs of the, the parties. Um, the key to a lot of these biomass proposals uh, before us now are the subsidies and the inappropriate um, loopholes that are within those subsidies have to be re-emphasised again. They can, they, a lot of these uh, proposals will go through and will gain subsidies unless there's changes with very low efficiency, but furthermore, without end users for the heat. You know, it, it's, it's ticking a box within the application process for these biomass uh, fuel plants. We have to change the subsidies, we have to make sure that we can uh, extinguish these proposals, these proposed mass industrial sized biomass plants in their infancy. Uh, and I really look to our MSPs to support us in doing that. Uh, once again, great to see so many people here today. I've got really little else to say, uh, and I'll pass back to Amelia. Thank you. Okay, um, thanks everybody. Um, please don't go away just yet. There's going to be some singing about biomass. Please stay and get involved in that. Um, Sally is, is the lady in charge of the singing. I also would like to let you know that there's a couple of things that you can do to try to, to build awareness about this in Parliament. Um, we've drafted some letters which uh, are circulating around. Just come and talk to, talk to either myself or Hannah. Um, and please sign a letter and we'll send it off to your MSP on your behalf. Um, we need to make sure that there's more awareness about this issue in Parliament because that's really, really what, how we can make a change. Um, so once again, I'd just really like to say a big thank you to all of the MSPs who've come out to hear us. Um, and people, please feel... Yeah, feel feel welcome to go and chat to your MSPs as well, um, they're very approachable, and, um, and yeah, stick around for a little while, there's going to be some singing and chanting, and thanks for your attention, thank you.